Well, hello and welcome back to math. You are going to notice I've done a big jump from our blue book to our yellow book, wherein we're actually going to jump all the way to lesson five called exponents. We're going to talk about exponents today. Okay, well before we begin the lesson, what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to look at this opening exercise and I would like to see if you could solve these three expressions. These are expressions because they are a mathematical problem that do not have an equal sign. But because I've asked you to evaluate them, that means I do want you to find an answer. So if you would go ahead and pause the video and solve this any way you want. All right, so there's lots of ways I'm sure that some of you solved it. I'm sure some of you probably looked at it and you started with four and you counted on four more each time. So you went um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Some of you counted by fours, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. Um, some of you actually looked at this and instead of counting by fours, nines, and tens. You said there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fours. And so that means I have ten times four, which equals forty. So that saves a little bit of time. Let's try this one. One, two, three, four, five. So there are nine fives. So the answer should be forty-five. Down here we had one, two, three, four, five, ten fives. So hopefully most of you got the answer, 50. Okay, so going from addition to multiplication kind of made the problem a little bit faster. What do you think would happen if I took this and I wrote it in multiplication? So let's go ahead and write this five times by multiplying. What do you think that would be? Could I find a fast way to solve this multiplication problem? Well, some of us know that mathematicians, we don't like writing things long. We would actually take this and we would make it with what we call an exponent. And so we would write this problem 10 to the fifth power. Okay, we write the 5, as you can see, it's a little 5, it's an exponent, so it's kind of what we call a superscript. It has to be up here kind of in the air because we don't want it to look like this. These are two different numbers, okay? This would not be an exponent. The 10 is what we would call our base. And the 5 is what power we're at, or we call it our exponent. Okay? Now, we actually can solve this problem. We have to multiply. We'd have to evaluate 10 times 10, which is 100, times 10, which is 1,000. We keep multiplying. And we'll solve some of these here down on the bottom. Let's go ahead and move down to problems 1 and 2. Go ahead and look at these problems and see if you can write it in what we call exponential form. Exponential form means I want you to write it with the base and the exponent. All right, so if you did, you probably wrote that this was 5 to the 5th power. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 to the 5th power is how we read it. What if I would want you to evaluate this? Evaluate means find an answer for me. So go ahead and see if you can find an answer for me. All right, so if we had to solve this problem without a calculator, I probably would go ahead and write it like this. I know that 5 times 5 is 25. I have to multiply it by 5 again. So now I have 125, and now I have to take 125, and I have to multiply it by 5 again. Oh, let me move this up. And then, of course, I have to multiply it by 5 one more time. And I have the answer. 3,125. So I would come to my book and I would write 3,125. 
All right, let's look at the next one. All right, the next one we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Hopefully you wrote it like this. 2 to the 4th power. If I would ask you to evaluate, um, that means I would want you to solve it. Well, I know that 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And then 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, moving down. Problems 3 and 4. This time it says write each expression in expanded form. Well, we know that expanded means we usually want something to be bigger or larger. Right now we have this written as 8 to the third power. 8 to the third power in expanded form would be 8 times 8 times 8. So I've expanded it and I've made it a little bit longer. 10 to the sixth in expanded form would be 10 six times, multiplying. Okay. Once again, if I would ask you to evaluate, evaluate would mean, let's see if I would want you to find the answer to that one. Well, I know that 8 times 8 is 64. I have to multiply times 8 one more time. And I have the answer, 512. Now, if I wanted to evaluate If I wanted you to evaluate this one, obviously I'm going to take 10 times 10. Well, that's 100 times another 10 would be another 0 times another 10 and another 10 and another 10. So my answer should be 1 million. Okay, let's turn over to the next page. Oh, this time we have a variable. Remember, a variable is a letter. Um, it's a substitute for number g to the third power. Well, we're going to do exactly the same thing. This exponent 3 tells me how many g's I need to have. And so I'm basically going to have g times g times g. Now, obviously, I can't evaluate this problem because I don't know what number stands for g. All right. Moving down, what is the difference between 3g and g to the third power? Well, we found out that g to the third power is this. So let's go ahead and write it down one more time. These two do not look alike, so that means they are not going to be the same thing. 3g, we've talked about when things are touching like this, that means multiply. So to me, one of the options for this would be 3 times g. Another way I could write this is this says there are three g's. It could also be I have g plus g plus g. These two, let's put a box around them so we know that they're the same. Three times g is the same as g plus g plus g. Look very carefully. They look similar, but they are not. This is adding the g's. And this is multiplying the g's. If you remember, this was very similar to our opening exercise when we had 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 or 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, and we did some multiplying. Okay? So remember, these two are different. We'll look at this again in a little bit. All right, let's go down to problem number 6. Problem number 6 says to write the expression in expanded form. So we have parentheses. The parentheses are just allowing me to know that I have the number 3 and 8 tenths to the fourth power. In order to write that in the expanded form, we would write it like this. Now obviously what does evaluate mean? Evaluate means we would have to multiply these four numbers together to get an answer. If you have a calculator, go ahead and see if you can solve this problem for me. Alright, so let's go ahead and see here. Oh. Be very careful. We're not doing 4 times 3.8. So I'm doing 3.8 times 3.8 times 3.8 times 3.8. So I have four of them, and my answer is 208 and 5,136 ten thousandths. So let's write this big number on here.
Okay, remember, this is multiplying. Some of you wanted to do 4 times 3.8, which is a total different problem and a total different answer. Okay, go ahead and solve for me problem 7 and 8. Remember to write it in, oh, this time it says write it in exponential form. And write it in exponential form. And it says to evaluate. So go ahead and pause my video and see if you can solve those two problems for me. Okay, if you wrote this in exponential form, you should have put an exponent like this. If I would take my calculator and I would do 2.1 times 2.1, this is what I got for my answer. 4 and 41 hundredths. Okay, let's look at 8. Exponential form. Well, we had the base of 75 hundredths to the third power. If I evaluate, I would have 0 0.75 or 0 and 75 hundredths times 75 hundredths times 75 hundredths three times. And there's my answer. Ooh, big long answer. So I'm going to put here 0. Okay, so we've talked about exponential form, we've talked about evaluating and finding our answer, and we've talked about expanded, which means we write it out with all the multiplication problems in it. Let's go ahead and flip over to the next page. All right, so now we're going to look at some fractions. Number 9 says write the expression in exponential form. Well, remember, exponential form means with an exponent. Well, I see that my base is one half and I see that I'm going to put it to the power of three so that's how I'd write it evaluate means to solve it well let's see one times one is one times one again would be one two times two is four times two again four times two would be eight so this would equal one eight number ten Write the expression in expanded form. So expanded means we want to write it longer. Well, let's see. We have two-thirds to the second power. Some people say two-thirds squared. So I would do two-thirds times two-thirds. That is the expanded form. Evaluate means we're going to solve it. Well, let's see. Two times two is four, and three times three is Nine. So this would be evaluating. All right, so to give us a little bit of practice here, well, there's a chart. Here we have what we call exponential form. Exponential form, obviously, as you can see, means we're going to write it with the exponent. Expanded form means we're going to take it and we're going to expand it out and we're going to show how many times we have to multiply something. Standard form, that's our new word here. Standard form actually means when we evaluate. It's going to be our answer or the number that it solves our expression. So go ahead, and if you notice, let's look at the first one. We have 3 squared, 3 to the second power. I have two threes, and 3 times 3 is 9. Let's look at this one. I don't have the exponential form, but I can figure it out. Obviously, my base is 2, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's 2 to the 6th power. Standard means to solve this. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. And 32 times 2 should be 64. Okay, go ahead and see if you can solve the rest of these for me. Pause your video to do that, please. Okay, so let's see how you did. You should put for our 4 to the 5th power, the answers that look like this, expanded form, standard form. The next one, 3 fourths. If you notice, I put 3 fourths squared like this. Sometimes people put it in the parentheses just because they don't want that 2 
to get mixed up with that 3 and make it look like it's 32. So this is 3 fourths to the second power or 3 fourths squared. And the last one we had, I did the same thing with the 1 and 5 tenths. I also put 1 and 5 tenths in parentheses just to make sure I don't get them confused. And our answer is 0. Okay, now let's see if we can do it by reading the problem. This says 5 cubed. If I wanted to continue these columns like this and keep the exponential form, expanded form, and standard form, how would I write 5 cubed? What do you think cubed means? If you said 5 cubed means this, you are correct. How would I write that as expanded? Like this. Hmm, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 would be 125. Okay, so now we read the problem and we were able to write the three different forms. Turn your page. Okay, let's look at number 3. Write 14 and 7 tenths in all three forms. Okay, so let's go ahead and make some columns here like this. 14 and 7 tenths. How would we write 14 and 7 tenths? I could do it like this. 14 and 7 tenths. And it says squared. Um, I guess I could have done it like this too. 7 tenths. Oh, I probably want to do this to keep the two separate. Expanded form would look like this. And standard form would be my answer. And there would be my expanded. 216 and 9 hundredths. All right, let's look at a very common mistake by students. This says one student thought that 2 to the third power, 2 to the third power, was equal to 6. Hmm. I'm going to tell you right now that that student is incorrect. Can you tell me why that student is incorrect? Well, 2 to the third power means 2 times 2 times 2, right? Not plus, multiplying. Well, what's 2 times 2? 4. And what's 4 times 2? 8. The answer should be 8. What did this student do? <laughs> yep, this student multiplied those two together, which is very common, but that's not how we, for, how we find our answers with exponents. Okay, quick review. If I would give you this, 4m's, like this, write this in your book, and m to the fourth power. Are these two the same? Nope, they're not. They're not the same. This one here is m four times. You might want to write this down because I think it might be one of your problems in your assignment. This means you're actually taking 4 times m like this. These two are not the same. They're not the same. Some of us also know that 4m could be m plus m plus m plus m. These are adding to get 1, 2, 3, 4 m's. These are multiplying. Two different things. They are not the same. The other thing I'd like for you to write into in your book, obviously if I would give you 7 to the first power. What would that equal? That would just equal 7. But if I would give you 7 to the 0 power, what do you think that would equal? Alright, you're going to think this is crazy, but 7 to the 0 power is 1. <laughs> crazy, isn't it? So the reason that any number to the 0 power is 1 is because any number to the 0 power is just the product of no numbers at all, which is the multiplicative identity of 1. So for example, it doesn't matter what I give you, I could give you 10 to the 0 power. You should tell me it's 1. If I gave you x to the 0 power, 
it's also equal to 1. Okay? All right. Well, hopefully you're understanding exponents, expanded form, and standard form. Tomorrow we will move on to something else.